those is it, paths. Is this the idea of the Giza power plant? <laughs> this is one of them. Yeah, exactly. So what yeah. is that? What what is the Giza power plant well, it's concept? A, it's a intro, but championed by Chris Dunn, by the way, a friend of mine, um, uh, author guy I respect greatly. I interviewed him on uh, my channel. He he wrote a book that he's well known for called The Giza Power Plant that suggests that the the the, the pyramid was a, a, essentially a, a device for producing um, energy, and uh, he he explains every facet. What's interesting about his theory, I still I. To me personally, it's that still sits within like well, we're trying to use our perspective to kind of explain it. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting about it is that he does explain every aspect and element of the pyramid in that. And using his theory, he successfully predicted what was behind Gaten Brink's door, which is like a whole other. There's a couple of these shafts that run out of the chambers in uh, the Queen's chamber, in particular, was the one they're talking about. There's these these shafts that run out. They're very small, like a like. 10, 12 inches sort of wide. Is this like you, when, you, when you look at like the anatomy of the pyramid? Yeah, you see these little shafts. Can you Google the, like, the anatomy of the Great Pyramid and yeah. we can have a visual for this? Yeah. But yeah, so there's the tombs in there. Well, so well, there's the King's Chamber. Well, like chamber. So-called, right. cha I call them so-called King's Chamber. There's an upper chamber, a lower chamber, and then the subterranean chamber. Right. Um, and so also called the King's Chamber, the Queen's Chamber, and subterranean chamber. Um, now, there is shafts that lead out from the king's chamber that eventually reach the outside of the pyramid. The queen's chamber ones terminate somewhere inside the pyramid. And when they finally, finally sent some robots up there to look at it, they found, well, there's a door here. Like this little shaft eventually terminates with a little little limestone door and what looks like copper handles in it. So they they eventually said, we'll get another, get another robot, get a drill, and we'll stick a camera in there and have a look. And so Chris Dunn, using his theory... Uh, successfully said, well, under this theory, what you should find after that door is, is a space and another door. And that's exactly what they found. So yeah, there you go. That's, that's, this image here is, shows you the, um, the upper chamber, the red there is the, uh, what you would call the King's chamber with uh -huh. the, it has a series of chambers above it that are all these essentially 70 ton granite blocks that are all stacked up in this right. internal structure. And it has these shafts on labeled as 10 on this diagram that reach the outside. So the shaft, what's the shaft they put the camera down where you saw the door? Uh, not like seven, I think, is the seven, the, seven, the queen's okay. chamber shafts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's, yes. So, I mean, by the way, the you got to understand <laughs> the ridiculousness of the orthodox explanation for all of this is that, is that, so when they, had, apparently when Khufu had this built, he had the, the he was going to be interred in, this, in number seven there, the, what's called the queen's chamber, and then he changed his mind and said, you know what? put it further up in the structure and, and do that. And they just built it on the fly, which is, which is absolute nonsense. I'd like to point out like you do not, we've the precision of this structure is rarely matched to today. And in fact, wasn't matched until the 1800s in terms of it, of how precisely the, the great pyramids aligned. And there's about a million other aspects to the great pyramid that we could talk about. Oh yeah. We don't like this. Fuck it. Let's make it a little bit taller. Yeah. Yeah. Make it a bit taller. Like then that's the idea. We, they did this on the by fly. Air. It's absolute nonsense. And one of the, I have a couple of videos that look at this stuff too, is, is that one of the things that's remarkable about it is the, the structure itself is interesting, but the actual foundational work that went into the ground to prepare and build on top of is just as interesting, uh, like an engineering challenge and, and puzzle because they did they must have spent years and years preparing the site uh, to 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 basically take this this object, and this is the case both with this pyramid and in particular the middle pyramid, uh, because it it's not on flat ground. They had to prepare the ground like they 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 literally the whole thing's locked into t into into the ground with these foundational tiles of limestone that some of them weigh like 150, 200, 300 tons, and they're it's dug down and that's that's they created a foundation layer for. Uh, the pyramids, and in particular on the middle pyramid, it's actually built into this a sliding, uh, like a sloped hill on the on the. Uh, I think it's the north. No, it's the um, the western side uh, of the of the pyramid. Uh, is is like it's cut down about thirty feet, so you can actually go around. If you go around the western side of the middle pyramid, it's like this thirty foot wall where they've cut down into the bedrock, and then they've leveled that out, and then they've built up the eastern side with these huge tiles. And then they've built this like millions of tons structure on top of it. And some of the, the, and they've actually used the bedrock to lock it in too. So instead of like taking all the bedrock out, they, they actually like on the, on the west of the southwestern corner, the top five courses of that pyramid are actually bedrock. So it's not tile, it's not like blocks. They shape the bedrock and then it just integrates slow, it's with the slope of the hill. 
into the rest of the structure uh, to where all the way on that on that eastern side they they built it up with with foundation tiles and locked it in. So that whole thing is just locked into the bedrock. Like it's it's that's one of the reasons it's still standing and they resist earthquakes so much is that they are so well designed and there's been so much engineering about how these things are locked into the bedrock that they have put up with all these earthquakes and uh, they're still standing versus so many of the other structures from ancient Egypt that were done later that have all fallen down. So going back to what you were talking about with Chris Dunn, when he, when they were sending the cameras up uh, down those, those pathways to go into those chambers, he predicted what was going to be on the other side of that door accurately. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what so was on this? It was door? a space and another door. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And so the, the little copper things, they look like door handles. They could have been electrodes. So that's that's how they fit into his theory. Uh, I'm not 100 percent up to date on 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 that book. I haven't read it in a while. Uh, but using his, what's interesting to me is that using his theory, he accurately predicted what they would find, and that's what they found. So uh, Chris is writing another book. He's writing a follow up to it. He's done. He's got some more data now. There's been more research done on the Great Pyramid. In fact, there seems to be indication of a whole other series of chambers in there that we haven't discovered yet. There was something called um, uh, muon detection. There's a, I forget the scan pyramids project was the name of it. So they mm-hmm. they they they've been doing this. is actually a great experiment. I I hope they do more of it. But they've been doing this for years, where they put these cosmic ray detectors inside the structure. In fact, the last couple of times I've been down into the both the queen's chamber and the subterranean chamber, which are normally off limits to to tourists uh, until you you get a special permission, you can go in there. Uh, they have racks of equipment and they've they've been doing these muon detection experiments for a couple of years now. So you're looking at cosmic ray particles and and there's a slight difference when they go through a material versus through a void. Mm. So by detecting this and analyzing and compiling this data over years, they've kind of determined that there are a couple of large voids still inside that structure uh, that we haven't discovered yet or, you know, no, not publicly discovered yet, I'd say. Wow. Um, so we'll see what happens. And, you know, of course, this... Yeah, this was this caused just this announcement caused some some angst with the Egyptologists who came out and said, "Well, there is no such." I mean, Sayuas went between. Well, there is no other no other chambers, and if there are other chambers, we already knew they were there. And <laughs> it's this crazy response to it. So I don't know. I, I hopefully it's hopefully whatever they discover there, they make it public. But uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if there there are things like that that have already been discovered and then kept on the down low because they don't really match the, the, the regular story. What if this, they just wanted to keep it secret so they could sell it to another country for like <laughs> some sort of like weaponary <laughs> purposes? Or if they found out what it does or there's something like, we turn this one back on. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you imagine? Yeah, I'd like, yeah. I'd bring it on. Why not? Why not?